Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Angular Spring Boot. In this episode we are going to dissect the Angular project structure. If you're new with Angular projects you have seen that you know even at the very beginning even after using an ng new command we have a lot of files and a lot of folders in the default project. So uh, getting a grasp on what they mean and uh, how you should use them uh, is pretty important especially for, for, for beginners. So today we are going to completely demystify the Angular project structure. Now before we begin I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more software development courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Regarding the Angular project structure, so we've created our noted ng app. This is how the project looks, you know, uh, in the ID. And let's transform it a little bit. So, what you see here on the right are the most important folders and files uh, that you need to be aware of when dealing with Angular. And in this episode, we'll take them one by one and see what they represent. The first folder that we'll start with is E2E. Now, E2E stands for end to end and basically refers to some scripts uh, that we can write here. And those scripts represent user actions, or better said, they simulate user action on your system. So if you want to write end to end integration testing for your Angular project, this is the place you would start with. So these are the scripts that you would consider in order to achieve this result. The next folder is node modules. Now we've discussed a little bit about node modules in a previous episode when we installed Bootstrap and Fantasm. Basically this folder contains all the libraries that you downloaded using the npm install command. And by default even when you create a new Angular project some dependencies are added here for you and for the ones that you decide to use afterwards you know you have to install them using npm. And those packages that are downloaded will be placed in the node modules folder. Now, one thing that you need to be aware of is that this folder is not normally and should not be included under source control. So it's a local folder, all the packages are installed locally. And for example, if someone else were to, you know, download this project for source control and he needs to actually, you know, build your project, then he can just remove this folder and create an npm install. And that npm install will look uh, in the package.json file and then node npm will download all the node modules in here. Okay, the third one is src. Now, this is the root folder where we keep our application's internal code. So everything that we write will probably write under src. Uh, taking this uh, level down, we have the app folder. Now, by default, when you create a new Angular application, it comes with a default app module and a default app component, you know, because in Angular, you definitely need to have at least one module and at least one root component. And by default, they are stored in app. And then if you want to add more modules or more components, okay, we can add them uh, in here under the app folder. Assets uh, is another folder that stores all the images, fonts, I don't know, music files, and pretty much every static content that you can think of. So if you have a GIF, a PNG, a font, or whatever, just put it in the assets and it will be globally available in your application. Uh, the favicon.ico file is basically the small icon that you see in the browser. So is this little uh, icon that gets displayed in the tab of most browsers and of course you can change it to suit your needs. Now index.html is the basic, is the root view of the application and it's a very simple HTML file. It doesn't contain any CSS, it doesn't contain any script. Those will be added after the build process. However, it contains the title of your application it contains the base href. For example, if you have a server and you want to run your application at, I don't know, uh, some server name slash myfancyapp slash API, then we can play a bit with the base href parameter. And by default, all our applications will run 
under root. So we don't have to specify anything. It's just the IP address and the port number. And then we have this application root in here. So app root basically inserts the app component that we discussed uh, earlier in this HTML file. And pretty much this is the default Angular template that you see when you first fire up an application. And just a quick reminder, you usually don't have to add a lot of things in here. So the index.html is pretty good as it is. We can you know, modify these parameters, but don't put in uh, more HTML, don't put in uh, you know, styles or things like that because uh, when you build your project, um, they might get uh, you know overridden. So don't use this file you know as a, as a template you know, because Angular is smart enough to include all your views and to bundle all your scripts and styles at the build process. Now we have main.ts. Now index.html is the root view of your project, and main.ts is the main entry point into your application. You know, is the main executable entry point now. Uh, if you've worked with Java projects or C-sharp projects or C projects, it's similar to a main method, you know. Again, it's a very, very simple, you know, file. It just bootstraps the root module, which in our case is app module, and then that's pretty much it. Now, the Karma Conf.js uh, is basically a configuration file for Karma. If you're interested in running unit tests for Angular project, this is where you would configure you know, the Karma test runner. Polyfills.ts is another file. Um, again, it's a, it's a very small file, but uh, you can make, you can use it to make your application compatible with various browsers and especially with other browsers. So if you want to target, I don't know, an older version of IE, then you can go in this file and include polyfills that support your desired version of Internet Explorer. Uh, styles.css is the global style sheet of your application and you can use it to either import other style sheets in here. Uh, if you remember, we did something similar with Bootstrap and Fontasm. So we've included, we've imported uh, those CSS files in the styles.css to make them globally available. However, you can use this file to also write, you know, common classes, shared classes, shared, shared styles for your entire application. So if you want to write some classes that are globally available, you can do that in here. Otherwise, please remember that each component that you write will have its own style sheet that's available only to that component. So the styles, you know, is like a shared, you know, style sheet, then each app has its own individual, you know, style files. Uh, the Angular JSON is basically, it, it's a configuration of your Angular workspace. So it contains the package manager that you're using. Uh, it contains also global styles. So if you want to mm, grab CSS files from the from a CDN or something like that, you can do that here. It contains some global JavaScript, you know, scripts that you want to include in your application. Uh, the app prefix, for example, you might not want by default uh, every Angular application you know has a prefix of app, but you might not want that. You might want to give it a custom name. So again. Um, the Angular JSON file is the place to go for this. And finally, package JSON is the file that contains, that describes all the NPM dependencies of your application. So each time we add a new dependency, each time we install something uh, from Node, from NPM, we need to actually make sure that uh, those references uh, are present in the package.json file. So uh, this is an example from our case. And besides the shared Angular dependencies, we also have Bootstrap and Fontasm. And now they have been added here because when we install those packages, we use the dash dash save command. And that made sure that you know our dependencies are in the package.json. Now, if you don't add them here, uh, when another developer will grab your source code, he will try to run an npm install. And because those packages are not here, they will not get populated in the node modules folder and you will not be able to execute your application. So please make sure that you put all the dependencies in here. Now, this was a small overview of the most important files and folders that are present in an Angular project. Uh, don't worry if it's too much information because uh, when we build the application, you know, we will run through them again. And by the end of this course, 
I think they will become you know more clear to you once you uh, get a little hands-on practice. Before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.